Okay, hi there. So this is the second glaze, and it's going to be the last of the films that I'm going to make of this portrait. And I was really happy with it in the end. I think I can get it even closer next time. So I'm looking forward to doing more portraits of uh, more copies of Rubens. But you can see the, the change from the first to the second glaze. So the first was it's quite sort of bleached in a way. And um, you know the second one, I think probably because I was using my iPad for a reference, uh, it's still quite light as compared to the original. You can see that at the very end of the film. But uh, just hopefully it will just demonstrate that uh, even if there are adjustments to be made between glazes, you can see there's aspects of the drawing that I've changed. And uh, certainly I've been able to sort of deepen the shadows and bring out some of the highlights and generally achieve everything that I was hoping to uh, this time round. So I just hope it's clear uh, when you watch it. It should be pretty straightforward. Again, I'm just using vermilion yellow ochre. This time I do use a little bit of burnt umber, but uh, there's nothing else. There's no alizarin crimson or anything like that. Uh, a bit of black. So essentially, yeah, those sort of four colors with some white as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's just been such fun to do. Uh, so thank you very much for the opportunity, but I really hope you enjoy this film. So I've done the first pass of the uh, glaze and I've waited for it to dry. Uh, I'm very excited to get going with this because I haven't been painting for a few days now. Uh, and um, I, I'm not sure, I don't think it necessarily went wrong, but I just feel I could have possibly got closer to it in the first attempt. But that's just something, you know, that's all part of the learning process. And now I'm just going to approach it as I normally would, which would be to work from dark to light. And I'll just sort of build um, into the colours, make them a bit richer, and then work half pace back into the colours, mix it all together. And hopefully we'll be able to get sort of closer to the original at least. So a very limited palette, as you can see, I've got burnt umber and raw umber, yellow ochre, vermilion, a bit of black and some white and we'll just yeah let's see how it goes so I've just resisted the temptation to use alizarin crimson because I just feel that you possibly didn't use it at all and maybe it's something like this so just got vermilion and burnt umber there it's quite dry so I've got some medium I've oiled out that's quite wet now There we go, that's quite warm and generally the shadows are all quite cool but then you know we'll be able to adjust as we go. I think this is always where glazing really comes into its own. It's Just keep keep building it up, keep keep deepening these shallow areas. So you can see there's quite a lot going on here. This is very warm around here, so that's quite similar really, it looks from where from where I'm sitting. Just everywhere just did look at the time too light. So I'm just finding areas all over the portrait where I feel that it's at the moment too light and I'll just just leaving it there and we'll just see how it, it mixes in. So around here I think it's very it's very cool. So I've got another brush here. I'm just going to start adding a bit of black. And maybe I could just let's see what pure black looks like. Black is very, very useful for 
uh, certainly putting shadows in um, in hair and things like that where um, you know you're painting blonde hair I mentioned before I did a portrait of my daughter and I just managed to finish the painting after I'd worked in it generally that was just when I was sort of starting to get into glazing and I wasn't so au okay fait with it but I just needed to sort of find a way to sort of conclude um, just the darker side, the shadow side of her, of her head and her hair and it just did it very quickly just in one coat of black, just one very thin application of black paint. So you can see I can just use it to model the transition just a little bit and that it immediately seems to help. I think it's, um, well there, you know, that's something to learn immediately, uh, black, black was what Rubens was using, who knows, but it seems closer anyway, this is definitely more pronounced than the original and there's definitely more of a shadow here. It might appear a little bit random, but I'm just going over where I can see it might need it. And if it's too much as it is there, I'll be able to take it off, it's not a problem. I think so I've just got my other brush, so I can just start to pick it off a little bit with that. That's quite cool in there. Okay, just got to be careful. So I'm just taking a little bit of black off the brush by wiping it on just the, on the board. Now I need to adjust this eye. I know I'm going to put um, for the cornea. It just needs a little bit more white. It's, light, it's definitely brighter. In the original and it goes up so um, you know just to really emphasize the curve of her upper lid this is something I didn't do first time round the shadow of this lid so it must be One thing with this uh, M. Graham's acrylic, um, no, not acrylic, sorry, Alkin medium, is that uh, sometimes a linseed does this too. You know, if it's if there's quite a lot of medium used first time round, then it doesn't necessarily blend so well. So it just seems to sit on the surface a little bit. Um, but this is something I'll be able to I'll adjust with um, the half pace. What a pronounced shadow here. I just felt at the time you know, the drawing of this eyebrow wasn't quite right. It was maybe it's there's a softer transition. Quite soon I'm gonna to have to get into some um, of the highlights. So it's definitely a warm, warm shadow in there. I think we'll probably spend, I'm going to spend around two hours doing this. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll film it all. So it'll all be in real time. But you know, obviously skip through if it gets boring. There's much more a shadow in here and it's more, it's, it's a cool shadow. Don't worry, I'll be able to redraw that. And 
I mean, maybe there is, but I'm sure there is actually a bit of crimson in her lip, just in the shadow. That's going to need a finer brush. Uh, I know it looks like she's got a moustache at the moment, but I, I can see how that is going to really help her. Just with, you know, I need to work into the highlight. The highlights were darker, and looking, it's really glowing orange around here. So the darker than I did it originally, so I got a bit carried away with this sort of area. It is very, very white where her forehead catches the light, but apart from that, not so much. So I have to sort of find a whole new range of colours. There's a lot of paint on this brush, so it's just got. A, I've just rubbed it off a little bit, so it's just got a tiny bit of black. It's picking it off actually, maybe too much. wonderful thing is that where the paint originally was quite crude just going over it I can just make it so much softer just with little just very very fine application of paint so that's just taking it away again So I'm not sure of the exact order with which she would have done this and I said that maybe, I'm sure you could get closer first time round, but just doing this now it just really feels, from what I can see, it just really appears as if this might have been his approach. So building up the initial colours over a sort of dead layer, over an underpainting, and then just reworking into it. I mean, it would be spectacular if you could achieve the sort of results he has in one go. That would be really, really something if he did that. I just um, hats off to him. Yeah, this is just why I love using glazing because it just is so transformative. So you can see just very, very crudely before it was too light here. So now I'm just uh, really emphasizing the build into this shadow. And I will go over it with a sable brush, so fear not. It's quite warm in here. That's too much, but again, some yellow ochre will change that. So this is yeah. This is how. Um, I'm doing it, just going over just all of the areas before any highlights. Let's just get in um, and do all of the shadows. So I've just got this is my um, it's a long round brush. Bit easy. I'll mix the two, I think. So I've got a bit of black and a bit of umber and vermilion. So this is just warmer. This comes around here. It's probably too warm, really. And soon this is going to need a little bit of vermilion. There's a line of her la lashes, but 
that's just quite fine detail. See, so if I go over it, if it's too much, you can rub it off and actually, for example, in that area just there where I've painted, just around her, in her cheekbone, just in the very deep shadow, so I've just got, so I've got some yellow ochre and I'm going to mix a tiny bit of vermilion and yellow ochre, that's just what it feels like. I'll just see, that brush is fading actually. Okay, so well, I'm going to go to Sable now, so I'm just going to get a tiny bit of oil on there. So it's just ochre. So I've just left it there. To it with this with the hog's hair. It's just a tiny bit more of it. See around here in the shadow. It's just a lot of back and forth, really. This is just an oil acrylic brush. Um, so not a sable, but you know it's just it's synthetic fibers, but they're pretty good these ones for um, for just doing very very thin layers. So now I am adding. Just, yeah, just a little bit of colour. You see, um, I know the, uh, the first time round I felt that uh, this, these shadow areas were created by the underpainting underneath the later applications of colour. So I, don't, you know, I know it's sort of possibly a synthetic version of that that I'm doing. Uh, basically, I don't know, it's very, very difficult to tell. I don't know what came before or after. But I'd still like to get as close as I can to just feeling, I don't know, something like the actual process that Rubens used. So I'm going to rub off some of this if it's too much. So I would say, yeah, that's just kind of quite fairly 
guitar, but you know that immediately gives it a, a depth. And you might have seen in some of the other videos that I've made, yeah, it just just takes a little bit of time this and it doesn't look right for a while. But Rubens was known for his sort of fluid handling, so um, it's uh, it's quite possibly it's close to the way he would have used it, the way he would have um, applied paint. It's just trying to model out some of the brush marks. And then, yeah, that's the wonderful thing, you can just, you can pick it off as well as put it on. Get off there, put it on here, maybe. And this is what I felt I could um, rectify, possibly, just because it was too light. So, just very, you know, thin glaze, and then it starts to, to look close again to the original, maybe. And if I can just build up around that, I can leave this highlight, I can just, you know, this that will sit in the context of the darker surrounds. There's this very ochre patch here, you know, look at that, that's just amazing. It's literally just vermilion and ochre, just, um, it's, it's so efficient, so beautifully, so effortless really, the way he does it. That's a great example, just there, uh, just, it's so straightforward, you know, just literally, just lightly, very, very lightly brushing on, and to my eye, that looks really close to the original, just that area there. So there are lots of places where you can see these differences two lights so I'm just adding a little bit more and then it brings out the highlights of the nose and then actually the shape of the nose here she's got sort of the, br the bridge sticking out and then there's a highlight that's the other side no I don't want it to become it's looking a little bit mm, what's it looking like oily I don't want to say that I might have thought that, I have to say it, possibly it is looking a little bit, or she's just looking too flushed, so yeah, let's not get carried away. It's all quite uh, much richer down there on her chin. But that, that works quite well actually. Uh, I mean I just got, what's that, it's just a random mix of yellow ochre and vermilion. But it seems to be doing the trick just um, over the top of the, the glazes I've originally done. trying to darken everything up and then of course we're going to work into it with some lights
Yeah, you know that's just too dark, isn't it? But I'll, so that I'll just have to do with a highlight. Just trying to um, yeah brighten that a bit. So initially, uh, I was just I, I haven't drawn that very well. It's just a bit crude in here, so I've still got the brush marks from the first time. You know, bear in mind I'm just trying to sort of do it fairly rapidly, and uh, of course it's preferable to spend a long time, much much longer, modelling those and just checking. You know, because I'll just come back to haunt you otherwise, you know, so it's a false economy, maybe. It's rushing through, but... Anyway, hopefully it's still, still helpful, so... No, I, yeah, I'm enjoying... I like this area. It's just... This brush is getting a bit too oily. I don't want it to leave too many marks. Oh my gosh. What I need to try and do is to mix something that's close to that, that but just a little bit lighter, so some kind of highlight. So it sort of works quite well around here. Although just in there, there's, yeah, well, uh, you can just pull it off with my finger a little bit. You can, I mean, looking closely, it's quite, the way he's done it, it's quite messy, really. And actually, yeah, possibly even better just pulling it off a bit. Who needs expensive tools? I've got all my expensive tools on my hand. My fingers are free. I'm spending a long time over there. Got a bit more of a million. And yeah, I'm going to get rid of it if it's too much. I have to go into the eyes with um, a fine brush and just tidy them up a little bit. It's too dark, but I'll be able to change it. I need. It's got, I've, got, I've got a fine sable here. It's in a terrible state. I didn't really. I'm so sorry, sable brush. I didn't wash it. So it's the first white I'm using. You know, you can see that I was wear I'm wary not to make it too light. It'll just really stick out. Mm. 
I need to go. I really do need to go to the brush shop. I have been to the brush shop, but I need to go again. Okay, well, here's another sable. So it's a bit lighter. There's definitely a light area just in there. So this is where it comes into its own. So the shadow is the so I've got the initial glaze, I've got the underpainting, it's all working together. So I've got the initial glaze, the underpainting, and then um, you know I've done so some darker shadow accents, and now I, I could just work into those and, and they sort of blend into one another. That's horrific. The modelling just takes time, it just takes time. Because of his wonderful facility, I don't think Ruben spent that much time doing it. That's just what I'm trying to sort of arrive at. That's the whole point of this sort of research just to try and find out how is it possible to what's the most efficient way to paint a portrait the most to create the most beautiful effects but to do it really efficiently I'm just suddenly worrying about likeness a little bit. Mm. I don't want to lose the likeness. So I've got some, yeah, let's get just quite a quite a profound highlight here. It's quite it's quite bright. Let's just see what it does. Because Hmm. Yeah, I mean it's not, it's definitely not uh, that dark around there. So very, very, very light. Actually, I've just noticed, yeah, of course it's, um, it goes down, it's like a sort of ski jump, and it's not as, this corner, inner corner of her eye isn't quite, oh, it's not that big, maybe sometimes it's just really difficult to work out what's going on but essentially there is a highlight here okay yeah I know that's not quite done it so just got my very small brush
I'm going into the glaze, the wet glaze, the wet shadow. That's work and work, and then they just, as you stroke the brush, you know, they're blending into one another. I'll just leave a little bit. Oh, it's, you know, it's too much, I don't know. I'm just leaving a bit, and then I can just mix it into whatever's there already. And, yeah, just look at at that it's that's not right I mean it's um it's a lot lighter so I've just gone over look I've just blotted that out so just the drawing I'll have to work back into it again with a bit of shadow Otherwise, it's got this um, yeah, the milky quality. This is quite dark. And I think one thing that's going to actually help it a lot is just a bit of white. This tiny bit of medium. Probably needs a bit of black actually. He has put some very, very fine highlights with very bright white just around in there. I'm not going to do that now. You can see it just where, just to create that. Um, wonderful effect for you know like a moist eyeball or a dewy eyeball So just taking the highlight that I added and just gently blending it in. So I'm rubbing, I'm just trying to keep as much paint off as I can off this brush, just trying to keep it as clean as, as possible. Otherwise it just starts to get a bit mucky and it's also the brush strokes are visible. It's definitely the colour that I want uh, to arrive at. Um, yeah, it does need a bit of highlight in there, but <clears throat> excuse me, I'm quite happy with the colour there.
Still got my finger mark in there. There's a few bits of dust around. So look, yeah, so I've got this synthetic brush, <coughs> I'm very sorry, <coughs> and yeah, just, you can do, you can still see the brush strokes, <coughs> oh my goodness, but so I've got this um, synthetic brush and it's just really working in, in terms of you know just just very light strokes over the original glaze and that's just the beautiful transformative aspect of glazing that I love so dearly I just get so much from that so actually I just noticed there's this sort of She's just tensing a muscle in her eyebrow just here. There's just a slight shadow in there. And I don't know if that gives her a more, that's sort of her quizzical look. So I've just got some vermilion and white here. I felt <coughs> earlier on that, um, you know, some of these uh, skin tones were just a little darker, just a little pinker. So, as I said as well, I'm going to preserve this highlight as was, and hopefully it'll just shine in the context of everything else. Just going to blend this in a bit. So just trying to—I always emphasise, but it's just a process of um, you know I've gone over with the shadows, then I add some slightly lighter colours, some highlights, and I work back in from the highlights to the shadows, and then out again from the shadows to the highlights. And it's just an ongoing process until it works. And we're going to do some more systematic paintings, so that, you know, it'll definitely be a case where people can follow along. But for now, bear with me. using the brush to pick it up pick off the paint as much as put it on that was that sh sh little shadow area I was talking about okay got my sable now the highlight around underneath her left eye is very pink. So I'm make sure it's not too pink, so I've got a little bit of yellow ochre in as well. adds to her expression generally, I mean in terms of the original portrait, it's quite hard to, to capture it. too much. Okay. 
But she looks like she's just about to laugh and she's just got, she's just trying to get this sense of her cheek puffing out, which is why the shadow works to support that. Here, yeah, the shadow under her cheek. Getting, getting a little bit dark in there. What it needs. It's just next to the lip, there is this, this area where it's lighter, this dimple. Okay, so I've got another one of these synthetic brushes actually. Um, it's quite a big one. But I'm going to use this to paint a few highlights. So I'm not going to add any medium, there's a lot of medium already there. No, that's not right. So it's got more yellow ochre in. It is lighter. It's all around here. It's very, very light. We'll have this unsightly shadow here now. <coughs> Get some even brighter highlights. So this is quite this is pink, but it's very very light. That isn't really white over here. You can see that there's a lot more vermilion and yellow ochre just in that area. But I'm just going to keep this because it's just on my brush. I'll just I'll go back to that. I'm just going to go around, just adding a few highlights, and we'll work back in. So I still haven't resolved this area just around her lash. And one thing, seeing as we're on, so I don't need to worry, I've, you know, it's going to be slightly pink, but that's fine. I'm just, I need, I need to draw this. Use these. Quite, there's a lot of medium in it, so it's showing up the colours underneath. I think that works a little bit better, just slightly. I just noticed it when I stopped earlier. There's something about just the way she appears to look up. Hmm. 
and look here is the white of the eye just underneath Goodness me. Yeah, it's just quite delicate and I'm please use a mask stick. I'll demonstrate that, I will demonstrate that one day. I do enjoy uh, being able to get a portrait to the point where it does feel like that it's watching you. And that their eyes follow you around the room and I think I've nearly got it. I need to do something about her mouth and her lips. I'm going to use the brush just to soften some of these transitions. Don't want too much paint on the brush at all. There's definitely yellow ochre around here, a lot of yellow ochre. So you can see after all the modelling I did, I've still gone into it with a lighter highlight. Just mm. I don't know if that works or not. So I shouldn't really have any white. Yeah, that's not the same as that he's done, it's not the same. So I'm going to mix up a new colour here, I've got lots and lots of each. Bearing in mind, you know, what have I used? I've just used some burnt umber, a little bit of black and then the um, and then the tours of the vermilion and the yellow ochre, so it's still just so limited. So you can see better to use the pure colour. There is white on the brush but it's uh, purer than um, I had before. You don't want to mix up too much white. 
just becomes just uh, just too pink. I was just trying to draw and drawing as I go. Trying to get that right. You see then, yeah, I've got to be just very careful again not to go, that's what I did before, is that you start using the highlights and I'm not sure if my reference is too light, but uh, then everything starts brightening too, and then it suddenly gets bleached and you've lost it, so just going to hold back a little bit. Now I'm sort of using a bit of dry brushing as well now. This is just, this, you know, it's hog's hair. That's okay. This, it's getting to a point, I always find, you know, you arrive at a point where there's a lot of paint on the canvas and you can just start moving it around. And the canvas, when I paint, is like a palette. And I'm mixing as I go. I'm just mixing all around. And yeah, that's just an, the example of what I mean. I had the shadow, I had the highlight. I've, I've been over there a few times now. There's a few different colours that have gone on there. And then I can just pull it all along and actually it all blends into, all of those colours blend into each other with one pull of the brush. And this is what I mean by you could now spend a long time really um, doing that in very subtle ways, trying to at least But yeah, I suppose I'm just trying to, as much as I can to remain faithful to Ruben's handling and I don't know how he does it, you know, it's just really, it's hard to see evidence of his brushwork. But it, it does have that, and you know because, I know because I've seen it in other paintings of his, that he does have a very sort of fluid, swashbuckling brush stroke where he just, he was really slapping it on and um, but he's com he's completely in control of it at every step of the process. So I'm just going to rub off some of the paint from this brush. And just carry on blending. Excuse me, actually, wrong glasses. I had to stop just to eat something.
Oh, right. Um, it's all quite bright around there. Definitely a very pronounced highlight here. It's probably too much, but so if it's too much, what I'm doing is I've just got this brush with, it's still got the, um, the mix of vermilion and yellow ochre and I can just blend that in and that is just, it's going to soften it, it's going to darken it and it'll blend it all at the same time. thing I must do in this video is the mouth. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, now there's definitely more of this, so uh, this dimple, there's definitely a sort of slight, nothing like what I've just done. Um, so I'm just leaving it there and I'm going to just tackle it in a minute. It's very dark under under the lower lip, and in here I've sort of got that almost right. There's a bit too much paint on this brush, so I'm just doing this bit. There's a bit too much paint on this brush. So I've got my hog's hair with practically no paint on it at all. And I'm just going to go in.
It's very difficult when you're copying because you can't really see the context. I didn't meet um, this girl and you know I wasn't there and just seeing it in this sort of particular light setting um, I'm just going along with uh, you know what Ruben saw you know and I have to trust it although sometimes it just doesn't really have a sort of logic or you wouldn't you know you might I might have seen it differently if it was if it was me actually painting this portrait from the beginning so it's never going to be perfect, and uh, you know, it's it's there are a, an infinite number of variables uh, when uh, we think about sort of brush stroke and th brush strokes and things like that, and how someone paints a portrait. You know, we can get a rough idea of the process. It's a bit like I did a test four of Velasquez that I'm going to do soon, and uh, you know, he's got this just very specific signature febrile sort of line that you know, it's this. It sort of hovers and, and wobbles. It's it's just very very typical of Velasquez. You know anyone would notice. It, anyone would recognise it. And I was thinking about it. And just you know, it's a bit like we all have our own our heartbeat. You know, there are apps that you can use that um, you know instead of a signature, you can um, you just uh, a computer can listen to your heartbeat, and that's your own unique signature. Or, or likewise. Well, there are many other things that are unique to us. The sound of our voice is unique to us. You know, of all the uh, seven billion people in the world, uh, there's only, you know, our voice is absolutely unique to us. And so, you know, all of these artists that we're looking at here, you know, they've got their own unique signature in the way that they used their brushes, the way they blended their paint. But it's also, you know, who was this person? What's the, you know, the time of day, the context of the sitting? Um, uh, just an infinite, as I said, an infinite number of variables, so it's never going to be dead on. Of course I want to get a likeness. But more than anything, I'm looking forward to, you know, when, I've, I've, when I feel like I've got to a point that I can approach a portrait in the same way, you know, of, of one of my own portraits, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that, that moment. When, um, you know, I can apply all of these things that I've learned and I'll put them, I'll post them too. Yeah, something interesting just about this area. I'm just not quite sure what's going on, in all honesty. That's what I mean. Rubens could see that. I guess it's quite easy to see, maybe. It's just a very sort of dark area of her mouth. Going into her lip. So I suppose it's always going to, regardless of how I approach it, it's always going to look like a portrait I would paint. Because of my own unique signature, just the way I use the brush, the way I like the feel of the oil paint, the feel of the medium. Oh, <clears throat> this is quite difficult. Oh, no, 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 no. Right, so I've just got, let's just... So I'm mixing some paint back in. It's not, it's not that tired. Just to make sure there isn't enough. I'm just rubbing it on the side. You know, I've just got a little bit of spare board. So I'm just rubbing on the side. I do need it to be lighter. So 
it's quite a big brush to be using for that. And then, um, okay, so yeah, so what I mean is as well looking at the original, see there's just some sort of messy areas around here where again you know Rubens would have been very um, sort of flamboyant with his brushwork and got to a point it's almost um, impressionistic got to a point where he felt in the context of the portrait you know, at the time that that worked to capture her that worked So I'm going to leave this bit, you know, even though it's just sort of a little mark. I don't know, I mean, from the beginning I've sort of been aware of that. So, yeah, I don't know if it really works, to be honest, but it's similar to the original. Um, probably a better idea just to blend it in just a tiny bit. So now there's all sorts of colours on this brush, but not much paint at all. Um, yeah, and that was one thing. So yeah, I don't want to sort of save that brush if I can. I've got my um, brush here with a little bit of the burnt umber on. But I'm going to mix it just gently into this. And because I felt looking at it, that uh, something about her cheek just needs to be brought out a little bit. And then this is like her hair. And her ear actually looks quite big there. I mean, where's the other? You would have thought that the other one would stick out a little bit if it really was that big. This is the kind of bit that yeah you can spend spend some time just trying to get right and yeah now so actually yeah just looking at the original I could just something and what I would normally do is probably litter and crimson here as well I'm just resisting the temptation just because I I wonder if he did or not you know who knows but um, maybe I'm just being silly. But it's just quite interesting just to see if you can do it without. So it's got to be, it's really quite dark. This is a very big brush as well. It's darker than I've done it. And it goes, extends. Now that is that. It's really, really difficult because um, if you do too much, it just looks like they're wearing mascara, and that's no good. So I think, and it doesn't matter that I've you know, just got a little bit of sort of pinky white on here. Just gonna take that just to make it just take it oh right yeah take it off a little bit. See is sometimes sometimes very very difficult and then you end up trying to throwing good off the bad, trying to make amends.
No, I possibly ruined that eye. Or the trajectory of it is as I've just drawn it. Yeah, that feels better. I mean, gosh, eyes are so just off the scale in terms of subtlety. And uh, please forgive me, I'll probably do a, a video um, specifically focusing on that kind of area, but you know, I've just, I'm just going to have to, later I'll turn the camera off and I'm just going to get really close and try and just get um, some very, very small brushwork in there just to sort of define the line of her lid there and just the eyelash. But you know, I've got fairly close to it, just using quite large brushes, but it's it's nice to just you know, yeah, definitely I'd encourage anyone to, you know, spend the time uh, to get it absolutely right. So uh, this is my brush with hardly anything on it and it's slowly building up lots of paint. Because, yeah, her eyelid. Starting to travel anyway. Yeah, going back, it's my brush with a lot of black. call it a day. Because I drew it slightly wrongly or it's just, you know, I had it sticking out a little bit too much there and it curls in, it, it just curls right in. And then I can describe those bits here just with, I'll just get some, yeah, just some light paint and just, you can just see he's just gone over it. I mean, it's quite strange really, because I don't think hair necessarily does this. He's done it, you know, it's, um, it's red. Um, she's, uh, there's red hair, but you know, just loads and loads of black, loads of black. This is a very, this is warm though, this is black, burnt umber and alizarin crimson, but that gets quite close to it. And you can see that, um, you know, I've done the first glaze and just going over just once, um, well for me, and I'm sure that would have been the same for Rubens, it's just enough. Yeah, so I'm not going to get bogged down in every single hair, but you can see, but you know, I'm, I like, that's kind of the way I work really, I'm just creating a sort of general impression of it. And it's certainly just in those few brush strokes there, that's um, you know, much closer again to, to where I had it before.
Actually, I sort of described them in a slightly different way to Rubens. Um, he basically went over it. I mean, I can just I'll show you. So, we're looking at yellow ochre, a lot of vermilion. Just mix up more yellow ochre. So, so I'm not in the way. But, okay, not like that. More. Certainly here, for example, this is quite a red mix, it's a lot of vermilion, and it's very very red, he's just gone... See where I've done that's quite chalky actually, so very red, red, yellow ochre, it's just a few... I'm doing it very quickly, but that's what he did. Okay, I'll just go, you know, I can blend those in. You can absolutely see it's nothing more than that, that's all. It's just with a lot more care, obviously. So, what I'm looking to do now is, I mean for me, the, yeah, the hair's okay, so I'm just coming back. It's just a little hair here that's just catching the paint. Putting a tiny bit on. It's quite, then suddenly it's quite a lot, but I'm just giving that, trans just softening that transition just a little bit. And my camera's going to actually run out of power in a second, I think, in a while. So, yeah, I'll show you a picture, well, I don't know if I'll have time, but um, eventually you'll see the finished painting as I leave it. Yeah, that's no good. But as I always stress, now the point is to just sort of continue working until you're happy with it, until it gets to a point. But you know, I've shown the, um, I've shown the general outline of the process that is just and repeat, just keep going. Uh, so, yeah, just amazing. It's been a really valuable experience to just see how Rubens. Uh, I think it's pretty close to his method because you know the the, the colours are fairly close, uh, and I've I've had here you know I've done the underpainting, underpainting I've done um, a couple of glazes I've only used these colours that's just really fantastic and I can just really see in the future uh, being able to sort of do that with my own work and my quest for the most efficient way to paint a portrait. Um, 
Um, you know, I think Rubens, you know, he was the king of efficiency. He had to be with his huge studio and everything. But I never fully appreciated, again, the sort of, the technical... Um, well, anyway, just, just the wonderful simplicity of his method. What would be good, actually, is, um, you know, before I go... Ooh, look at my pain, I just realised. So, a tiny bit of highlight. It's too much, really. Where he's left, it's almost like I was almost faintly in pasto actually. But I'll blend this in in a sec. It's risky, this brush is a bit frayed. Okay, so well, just for today and for now, uh, I mean, I'm going to carry on working on it. But in just in terms of the film, I hope that's been valuable, and I'm really looking forward to doing another copy of Rubens. Uh, very soon, I'm going to do a Velasquez, so hopefully um, you'll enjoy that. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is the painting again, uh, showing the change from the first to the second glaze. And then following on from that, you can see the second glaze, and it's the original. So you've definitely seen uh, most of it, bar 5% in real time. And I did spend an, about another 10 minutes just painting in the dark lines around her eyelids and some of the details, some like bits of her eyelashes and things like that. Uh, so so i was just i was really happy with it in the end because i feel it's it is close to the working method of rubens and now i've done it i think i can get even closer and work even more efficiently um I, you know i'll learn that from uh, further copies down the line and um i was still going to work on it a little bit more but i'm going to stop the filming now uh, I, there's a couple of areas that I would work on, you know, I didn't work much on the, the mouth, but it doesn't really need too much work, I don't feel, and I'll, I'll just really model some of the transitions around there next time. And in so, yeah, as I said, in terms of the film, I'll leave it for now. I think it just shows you how you can achieve these results. I've just used this extremely limited palette that... I've never used to finish a painting, so that's been an absolute revelation, and I can't wait to use it in my own work in the future. Uh, so I really hope the film's been useful. Bye for now.